In this presentation, we're going to take a look at some terminology, including jobs, sub-customers, and projects. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our job costing company dashboard. This is going to be job costing the name of the company. Hope that's not too confusing. We're going to be thinking about some terminology now with relation to the job costing, that being the jobs. There's different terms that are going to be used in different software and even different software from the QuickBooks desktop to the QuickBooks online. So if you're used to the QuickBooks desktop, just let's start there. If, you, if you're thinking about the QuickBooks desktop, I'm just going to jump over for comparison purposes. This is QuickBooks desktop, not QuickBooks online. I'm in the, uh, the customers and jobs area. And you'll notice if I have customers laid out here, then I can have basically a sub customer out or a, a job. If that's what a job is going to be related here. In other words, if I have customer one here, I could set up a job related to customer one by ins saying instead of new customer, I'm going to add a job. So then we're going to add a job and then possibly I just put basically the job number on it and it would tie out that job to uh, that customer indicated by the indentation within uh, the, the customer jobs field. So it's called a job. It kind of lines up with the job costing type of terminology and you can see it clearly in the, in the customer information that it would be lined up under uh, the customer that would be related to that job for that particular customer. Now, if we go into QuickBooks Online, we have a similar terminology for sub-customers, but actually, we're actually going to use the, the more useful, typically for most people for job costing, more functionality being used within the projects features down here. So don't get those two things confused. Uh, the, the projects are not the same thing as the sub-customers, and the sub-customers are, are basically what is going to be used or similar to what is kind of used in the desktop version. So when you get to the online version, then if you're transferring the jobs uh, to the online version, they will probably, they're generally going to be transferred as sub-customers. But that's not optimally what you want to do going forward with the online system. What you want to use is the projects because the projects is going to have that more functionality for most people typically. So let's think of what that looks like here. If I go to then uh, the sales tab on the left hand side and let's just make a, a customer. Let's just say this was uh, customer one and we'll just set up a customer. I'm going to add a, a customer there and there's going to be our first customer. Now let's set up, let's think about setting up a sub customer, which would be similar to a job that would be similar to the desktop version. What you would do is we'd go up to the, to the tab up top where it says new customer. I'm just going to add a new customer. I'm going to call this a, a number now, 105 for the job. We're just going to say, for example, purposes here. And then I'm going to scroll down and say that uh, we want this to be a, a sub customer. So now this is going to be a sub customer. And then I'll select the customer, customer one. It would be a sub customer of customer one. Then you have the option to bill with the parent or bill this customer. In other words, is it, is it going to be tied to the billing of the parent or the customer? If it's tied to the billing of the parent, then it will be linked to that customer. So when you process reports or run reports for the parent uh, customer, then it'll it'll link, it'll show you the, the sub-customers as well. So then if you were to say that and we were to say save, then uh, we're going to have a similar kind of, of data analysis or a similar type of information. I'm going to go back then to the customers up top. So we're back in customers and now we have customer one and then the sub customer, which is in essence like a job here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep uh, the customer, but I'm going to make the job inactive. That's just going to be an example. So I'm going to select this little drop down on the right and I'm just going to say inactive so it doesn't mess us, mess us up going forward. So I'm just going to say make that inactive. Are you sure you want to make it inactive? I'm going to say yes, make that inactive. So those that's the comparison between jobs and customers. Now what we're going to be using here will typically be on the left hand side is the projects. The projects has a lot more functionality and, and is usually what you will be wanting to use. So if you're starting up from scratch and you're putting this information into QuickBooks Online, you're typically going to be wanting to use the projects. If you're transforming or transferring from something like a QuickBooks desktop to online, then you got to be careful with that transfer because QuickBooks desktop has the jobs which will basically convert over to, in essence, sub-customers. And then you're going to, but you're, what you're going to want to use typically is going to be the uh, the, the projects information as you track the jobs. You'll track the jobs in essence like projects. 
So here's the projects. Make better decisions by knowing how your jobs are doing. See how it works. So you can go through the, through the information here. Profitability in one place. Keep track of your labor costs. Eliminate guesswork.s So I'm so the projects are what we're going to use going forward. So don't let that terminology get you kind of uh, mixed up. Going forward, we're going to be using the projects. And you can think of, in essence, the projects as like jobs, right? We're going to be tracking this information in each of these particular projects. And we'll be setting up the projects in the project tab on the left-hand side. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.